Did I just do that again? Every time someone gives me a microphone, I just fucking embarrass myself. I don't know why I'm let out in public anymore. So we're just getting the final details sorted, and then, yeah, we'll get the panel going. This should be fun. As I just said in the interview with you, Mick, controversial opinions about dance music and cocktails. What could possibly go wrong? I feel like I should be providing some sort of entertainment or something. Do you want me to tell me some jokes or something? <laughs> there was a Dutchman, a Slovenian, and a guy from Liverpool on a panel. No, no, forget it. I haven't got the rest of the joke. <laughs> Sounds like a good joke, though, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. I'm the only one to have a noise complaint about my uh, master classes, yeah. Chandeliers were shaking this morning, thankfully. Hey, thank you. Okay. So we're just going to go through these one at a time. Yeah, yeah cool. All yeah. Right. Lovely. Right, guys. Welcome to the panel. So we're going to have a nice little conversation about a few little talking points here. So we've got myself, Paul Nolan. I'll let everybody else introduce themselves as the mic gets passed around. And we have some statements that we're going to discuss, some of which, which should generate some nice conversation. So the first statement is this. Everybody is focusing on themselves way too much and not being efficient. Yeah, that's a bit personal, isn't it? We should work together more to reach a lot more people together. So, who wants to go first? Introduce yourself first, please. Hi, hi everyone. My name is Janko Z. So I run events in Amsterdam and in Sofia as well. Uh, we run the Sugar Factory Saturday nights, Tuesday nights, and also just started already for a couple of years in Sofia. We're pushing the scene there, and I've seen most of you there already. So again, about the statement. Can you reread it? <laughs> In English this time? Yes, <laughs> yeah. Yes. yeah. Give us a bit more time to think. Okay. Everybody is focusing on themselves way too much and not being efficient. We should work together more to reach a lot more people together. So that's a statement actually that it has been going around for some time. And one of the things that especially smaller organization complain the most is the heavy competition. So honestly, I can agree with this statement and some of the really nice things I'm happy we're doing with here, the people we meet in Amsterdam, is we're doing exactly the opposite. Like one of the, one of the best things I can say about the 50 Hertz and the guys is that's their goal, that's our goal, to get the people together and for the smaller organizations to just start working and yeah, push the stuff more together. Because I actually agree, a lot of the people try to be selfish and you try to do everything yourself and this is a business that <laughs> like most of you know is based on networking you cannot do anything if you're alone anything by yourself so that's my strong opinion cool nice yeah. Works. well yeah, it's nice to hear that about uh, our organization that we do i'm uh, i'm Renz from funk and uh, we uh, yeah we formed uh, 50 hertz together with my team and like Janko said that's exactly what we're trying to accomplish is uh, to create something brand new that is not there and people really working together and not just sharing a post once in a while, but really getting together, sharing ideas, giving each other honest feedback and just saying like, oh yeah, that track is really great. And then like, oh, fuck it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> just because it's on a promo from a label that you want to be on or something like that. So you're just being nice, but let's get real. Let's really give each other feedback so we can really grow, you know? And that's also why we work a lot with, uh, with Paul Nolan he actually uh, teaches you how to really uh, improve on your production skills. Uh, and that's part of the whole plan. And yeah, like what I can say about, for instance, Techno Tribe is a unique concept in Amsterdam. Uh, they work together with uh, a lot of settled big names, but they also let a lot of talents go on, uh, go on the stage and work together. And, be, and they created this kind of like techno family on that comes together on a weekly basis. You know, and it's, it's about the party and people are coming about for the party and not because there's a certain name uh, just getting some people in for one night no but it's like a weekly thing a weekly vibe that people come from and we have to get more into that kind of stuff 
And you can accomplish that if you work together and create something new instead of just putting some major names, which are great, you know, um, but just the major names on one flyer, you know, then you keep the same kind of thing, you know, and uh, we've tried to create a new, more room. So, yeah, from... Um, hello, I'm Umek. Uh, nice and my, th my, my thought on that, um, uh, for example, um, when we started the label, 1605, we said um, uh, we're going to sign artists uh, exclusively on how, how tracks are uh, if they're good or not it doesn't matter if you are a trans dj it doesn't matter if you're drumming uh, drum and bass dj we're going to sign it but it back backfire really heavily you know and it's um um imagine we were doing like really really good signing unknown artists and uh signing a lot of you know artists from ex yugoslavia and suddenly all the the, the feedback that we got like oh now everybody's releasing on 16 and 5 it's not special it's this and that and and believe me, we are all struggling. We want to um, support new artists, but <coughs> the feedback that we get, it's it's shitty and it messes with your head. You know, then you always have to find a right way to to sign an uh, an, an an very n uh, a known artist to 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 bring up a level uh, label to the next level, and then you know sign a new new artist. And believe me, guys, it's so hard. No matter no matter no matter what you do, no matter how hard you try, uh, this business is full of uh, egos. And that that's it. It's like every DJ, me included, it's uh, full of ego, and everybody wants uh, to be the best as he can. And uh, and um, but yeah, I always collaborated with with many artists. Right now, I'm doing uh, versus uh, our production with um, uh, with a lot of guys, um, and um, and I'm trying to to help uh, reach artists the next level. But believe me, it's so 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 hard, especially in techno. You ha if you ask me, this is the most elite, um, more elitist, uh, the, the most elitist style of electronic music in the world. Believe me, I went out of techno a little bit and I've seen guys in other genres. They are way much more uh, acceptable for co cooperation and uh, doing together in techno. You see, if you don't wear uh, a black shirt and if you and if you don't um, if you don't use the proper bass drum, uh, you get a you get a red uh, a red card and they kick you out of the league. So simple. Yeah, that, that's some nice, nice, nice words. I mean, especially coming from you, you know that you get a lot of the stuff there, and you've been in the game for some some time. Anyways, my name is Tino. Uh, I'm from Las Vegas. Uh, we do have a party over there called Techno Taco Tuesday. Uh, we've been having that party for about five years. Uh, something that actually resonates with the question is. Uh, us, and especially in Vegas, you know, like uh, experiencing in the early 2000s where there was tons of uh, e um, egotistic uh, people that were just doing things on their own and uh, eventually that, you know, ended. And uh, for me, it was kind of like an opportunity to come in and after observing everything that was happening to start putting a group together and actually bringing in all those DJs together and then just just create a bigger scene, you know? And so, like, uh, especially in Vegas, it's a little bit tough to create a scene just because there's – it's a very young city, first of all, and then second, there's not that much culture, you know? I feel like you guys are lucky to have a, be in a place like this. It has, like, tons of culture, you know? Uh, big cities like like London, uh, New York, L.A., I mean, you guys have uh, that, that on your side, so – and that obviously creates a little more competition, but if you guys work together, you guys can reach more, more, more things, you know. And um, so, anyways, we we started this party. We got everybody situated in Vegas. Everybody started to collaborate, work with each other. I think that we kind of influence a little bit in LA as well, because now in LA, uh, a lot of the promoters are are working together as well, based on the fact that they started to work with us uh, together in some of our events and bringing them into Vegas and and sharing that um, experience. Uh, especially in this panel, we have uh, somebody from LA, Ray Cash, that does a party over there as well. And like now, we he works with more people. We work with a lot of more promoters in 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 LA, and so we we try to go out of our city to meet more promoters that are doing the same thing. It feels like in the United States, uh, everybody around the states, they the the parties are small, and they they're going through the same situation that we all are. And uh, I feel like why not collaborate? Why not work with each other so that we can actually benefit uh, each other's like scene and, and just grow, grow. Like at the end of the day, we're here for the music. We're not here to to uh, be in the spotlight. But uh, 
I feel like that's that's the the major key, you know, going back to like just there's the main source, which is the music. How can we spread that to the people that are just maybe getting barely into it or discovering that kind of music? How can we share the music that we produce and 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 express ourselves through through it and and share that with just with everybody, you know? Like I feel like that's that's the key and so like now we're here in in in, in Amsterdam um this this year we had an amazing collaboration actually last year we did, did our first showcase and then uh we met Renz uh, from 50 hertz we made the guys from airborne uh techno tribe and so like now we're collaborating with each other you know we have this panel we we actually have uh you know like we did on tuesday we did, did techno taco tuesday at uh um uh techno tribes uh uh, uh event or venue uh, which is sugar factory and we had an, an awesome time, you know. Now, like this is family over here, you know. So, it's um, it's it's cool how like like collaborating with people even across the globe, like it just brings brings us together through just music, you know. And so, like at the end of the day, working together, we can do like huge things, man. Like it's it's very very simple, you know. Like why why do you want to work by yourself, just doing the this own thing to be in the spotlight? Eventually, it's gonna be too much work for you, you know. Um, and if you actually uh, share your your passion with other people that have the same kind of motivation that you do, you guys can do bigger things, you know. Hi, I'm uh, Christopher. Christopher Coe. I've started a label with Carl Cox called Awesome Soundwave, and we're focusing on live acts, live electronic acts. But actually, it's just all about me, really. That's the... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's always one, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, no, to, no, to be honest, I mean, I don't give a fuck about anybody else. It's just about me. I just want to be famous and make loads of money. Uh, no? Is that, I'm in the wrong place. Oh, sorry. That's, That's the other panel. The, coming from the guy who spends hours with other producers <laughs> helping them out, right? Yeah. No, I'm, look, the, it's a dichotomy, of course. I mean, we, as individual artists, want to express our individual um, artistic expression. That's really important. I mean, that's actually where a lot of music comes from. And, and in techno, as you all know, really, it is quite a solitary practice in lots of ways. You know, collaborations are rarer than uh, actual solitary uh, working in the studio for hours on, you know, getting that kick drum right, you know. We all, we all, we all know this, it's pretty obvious. And of course, so that, it sort of, it makes it a bit of a solipsistic sort of uh, um, practice. I do completely agree that, of course, uh, collaboration and particularly dialogue um, is really important. Uh, I think that a scene that doesn't collaborate or a group of people that don't collaborate can atrophy. And I, I've got an interesting and unique experience because I've worked both in Australia and in Amsterdam for many years. Uh, and actually, when I came to Amsterdam, I found that the Dutch people are amazing at collaborating. I really, I really, really love, I found, I was ref it was refreshing. Yeah, there's fucking snobby wankers everywhere in techno. I mean, there are people, oh yeah, I can't be with this label because they released this other guy and he's cheesy, whatever. Uh, but, but in general, I found that collaborations here were a lot more fluid and a lot, and a lot more supportive. Um, in Australia, where there's a smaller population and, and therefore a smaller scene, people were a lot more wanting to hold on to their patch. But that's also changed because we are now global. Because of the internet, we are now more in touch. You know, we could email each other and maybe co collaborate on something. I think that, the, that we have to find the right balance. I think as an artist, you have to also have your vision and you have to follow that. And if you can collaborate with someone as part of that, that's great. If you can do it all yourself, that's also great. But uh, I, I, I think that it's about finding the right balance between it. And I do agree, it's really difficult. It's really difficult to get a new artist over the line. Um, and that's kind of what we're hoping to do with this label. And maybe we'll fall uh, asunder. But um, I, I think it's about finding the right balance. Yeah, not even about just collaborating, as in doing music together or releasing a new upcoming artist, but also like... How can you look at specific features in the scene? Like, for instance, you're focusing now on a live section yeah. that have been out of the spotlight, maybe a little bit mm. for your idea. That's why you started it. You know, like, hey, these guys need some more attention. These guys need some more boost, like, as, as a specific group. And maybe to make a nice bridge, you're involved in a 
really nice also uh, a project uh, like an online concept uh, which is also helping out a lot of artists so yeah maybe you can tell us a little bit about that as well yeah that's uh, that's vibrate um, the biggest source for live music insights uh, right now uh, we are collecting and analyzing about uh, 5 billion data points per day which is which is huge and we have 350,000 uh, people uh, artists uh, there uh, half a million events and uh, 90,000 venues so imagine how big that is and uh, how we could help an artist uh, really easy these days it's kind of hard to uh, to even invest money in your own website and we give you that you know we could give you uh, especially for long tail artists uh, it's hard for you and this is where we come in you know we uh, we can provide you with that uh, with promotion we can help you and uh, yeah i would suggest if you don't if you don't have a page yet go to vibrate and and make one Cool. So yeah, uh, we're, we're a little pushed. Uh, uh, one Ooh. more thing. Yeah, one more thing. Easy. One more thing. Well, we've uh, in your goodie bag. There's this one coin uh, uh, that we prepared for you. It has just one coin <laughs> and has ten thousand uh, vibes. But there's like a lottery. One has it, and there's about the equivalent of four hundred euro uh, award. So oh, wow. a, a tombola for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's not. That's not it. <laughs> anyway, it's hold on. Hold on on that. Uh, that those wives, they're going to be worth millions. <laughs> <laughs> joke. Oh, that's joke. great stuff. But it's, it's exactly these kind of platforms. Oh, everybody's exactly. interested now. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's a crypto coin. Exactly. Yeah, we are. I am heavily involved in in, in the crypto scene. I love it. Uh, I'm enthusiastic about it. And yeah. Cool. Awesome. So yeah, we're a little pushed for time. So just to echo Christopher's yes. sentiments on my points, um, I think. I think Christopher's exactly right by you have to have a unique individual expression and you need to be able to focus on yourself in order to become the best version of yourself. But the best version of yourself is also somebody who in the right ways can collaborate. And it's the right balance of understanding when it's time to partner up and then it's understanding when it might be time for you to lead that more solitary kind of existence. And it's all to do with intention at the end of the day, as far as I'm concerned. If you've got the positive intention that you want to grow, then that means you also must have a positive intention for other people to grow. You know, like I like to say is that, you know, whatever you, whatever you endorse endorses you and whatever you damn damns you. You know, so it's about the energy that you put out there. And if you put negative energy out there, you're going to get negative energy back. If you put positive energy out there and you want to help people, I can tell you from first-hand experience, the amount of assistance and you know, help that I've had in return is absolutely monumental. You'll get it 10 times back, which is not the reason why I do it. I do it because I want to do it. So, Right, moving on. Now we've had the crypto coin hunt as well. I mean, you were all looking. Did somebody it. find it? Did somebody find it? Or no, not? it's in my bag. That, that, that's my <laughs> that, that's my payment for this. Anyway. Somebody's got to find it for sure. Exactly. Yeah. It's like the golden ticket and Willy Wonka, isn't it? <laughs> so anyway, right. The next next statement is the music industry grew significantly in the past decade, and today every kid with a Mac can be a producer. I mean, there's some people with PCs in this audience that are really pissed off. There's a chaos on the market. And the industry is clearly in need for some standardization and order. Standardization in, and yeah, order? I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Let's go punk. I mean, fuck it. W wishful thinking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I think that there is certainly uh, no real curatorial aspect. You know, hmm. let's, the record labels were assholes in lots of ways but there was all there was a sense of curatorial uh, energy about it yeah so that's interesting because now it's there's a lot of noise out there and it's hard to kind of dig through a huge a plethora of huge amount mm -hmm. of releases some are just on a laptop and not great quality some have an amazing vibe and the production is shit but it doesn't matter because it's amazing but it's really hard to dig through and find it so curatorial stuff is in, is needed, but then also it's quite democratized now in lots of ways. Mm. Maybe I'm being a bit idyllic, but ideal La idealistic. Labels are filters. Huh? Uh, labels are modern filters. Yeah, there are it's modern filters. So there's there they have a curatorial aspect, mm. which I think is still really important. You Massively. Know? Um, for me, I'm really happy that every kid can can be a DJ and a producer with a laptop. That's that's, you know. 
imagine how many people who couldn't express themselves uh, before where you could uh, have to find a synthesizer, pay a fortune. Right now, everybody has a computer at home. And I even, I, would, I shouldn't say this, but I even uh, support guys to, to, to download uh, pirate programs at the beginning. But honestly, if you're going to work, uh, if this is going to be your job, pay them later, you know, but, you know, everybody should make music if they have, uh, if they're interested in that and if they have something to say. And uh, back in the days when I started, it was, it was so, so heavy to, to, to buy machinery. For example, just uh, one simple uh, sampler costed about uh, 2,000 Deutschmark back then. And there's where three guys had to work in Slovenia for one month to, to afford that. Right now, it's it's um, it's easy to 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 start to work on 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 music and and this is why so much music is 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 coming out so much uh, amazing artists are you know popping out all around the world you know and then I um, actually I love it I love it Yeah I think there's uh, there's something to be said about the uh I agree with both of you, I've got to say. Um, I mean, I, I owned a record store back in the last days of vinyl, and the, the thing that I go back to from those days is that the quality filter came in because somebody somewhere was going to have to put their hand in their pocket yeah. and print and like have a load of vinyl pressed. And now that, that's totally gone because the risk was if you didn't get the A&R right and if you didn't get that record right, Somebody somewhere was going to be sat with a garage full of unsold vinyl for the rest of their lives, and that was that was the financial thing that caused the the, the, the curation and the and the real quality filters to happen. And I, I agree with you, Mac, in that labels are existing as filters. The, the The issue that we have is that every man, woman, and dog right now has a record label, and and the 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 the, the the path to market is now there is no boundary to market at all so there's a, a balance to be struck but yeah, the yeah. right labels are still doing that filtering in a really good way yeah but for example if you have a shitty label beatport will not take you i mean there's 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 a lot of shitty labels there anyway yeah but there were a lot of shitty, shitty records back in the days as well i had to we had to drive hundreds of miles to check through the records and believe me you know amount of records the shitty records that i went through vinyl is this is almost the same as now um, but okay, there are other platforms right now that they they take whatever Beatport doesn't take, and it just goes quality just fades fades away, you know. And and this is one point as well. But but still, a lot of music comes out like on a weekly basis, where you have to go through it and like you click new releases for change, you know, instead of just listening to promos, and then you get like so much. No, but I'm no. a DJ. If if I'm not going to do that, do that, I shouldn't play that's anywhere. True, that's true. That's, that's, that's true. the simplest yeah. thing. You know, they yeah. ask me like I go through every single release, all tracks I listen on Beatport. Believe me, it takes shitloads of time. But to find these some some tracks that other yeah, it, it's worth it. And uh, I'm 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 a DJ. No, if, that, that's true. if you're bothered about uh, music, too much music, uh, go do something else. But it, but that's true. But don't you think it's weird that somehow in this world where quality is like so like when it's not good quality. It's not getting you anywhere, but still somehow it's coming through. That is what I find fascinating. Uh, like, isn't what's that coming thing? through? Like, well, music it that doesn't. In general, like, it, it really doesn't. Yeah. On the end, you know, you have all these. It doesn't come through. There's shitloads of releases, and they don't. Go, they don't go anywhere. You yeah. can. You but have your label is still out. It's still like labels out there that think like. Yeah, of course. That they it are. is good, you know, and that it's not getting them it's anywhere. But still, they keep releasing it. Yes, and that's it's weird. You yeah, know? but label is releasing, releasing. It doesn't sell. It doesn't sell. It doesn't sell. Then artist doesn't want. Don't doesn't yes. want to to sign it. Any, and it's the end. It's simple as it's simple as that. It's just more noise, but there's still good music, and you should search through it. And mm. I don't know, we are now, it's, it's, it's crazy. We're complaining about we have more music to... That, that's, that's a good true. thing, guys. That's, true. that's a good thing. It's always <laughs> a good thing, yeah. Musical freedom is always good, you know, that's true. Yeah, I mean, so just to expand on that, there's a, there's a couple of different things. That, there's two different things I'd like to raise. And one is that actually one of the things I feel as if we're missing is... Walking, I mean, I might be biased because I used to own a record shop, but walking into a record shop and being able to say to someone who has already been through every single release that's come out that week and be able to go, right, what's good? What I used to love doing for people, whether it was big DJs like Sasha, right the way down. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I'm getting to that point, I'm getting to that point. But, but, the, but, the, but the thing is, is that you can then walk into a record shop and somebody can go, right, you don't need to listen to that. Here's the 50 things you need to listen wrong. to this week. Wrong. Way wrong. 
Do you made a bit porch? Um, you made a, your store chart to, uh, to 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 someone who would find something really good in those records he, he couldn't. That's but just a personal that person, I agree. But what if that That's person was curating those releases for those people Sorry? for their? What, what if the, the person behind the counter in the record yes. store actually knew your taste very very well and was like, you'd like this, this, no, this, no, this, no. and this. It's I doubt uh, I doubt in these days you could calculate that you know and and uh, oh I did on many occasions and it I, kept I me know, in business for a number I, of I years know, <laughs> I know you did but it, you know imagine you there was I'm sure there were some records because I always did it like that you know they I went to shops and they brought me all this pile of good records but then I went th through all the shitty records and I find a lot of ones that I like this yeah. is my personal taste and they never they never guessed half of the records they I found somewhere else. Yeah, True. I mean, sure, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they're both right. They're both right. And then now, I mean, actually, I was I was talking to a, a very good friend of mine. He's a, he's a well-known DJ on Tuesday night. And we were saying about how good Spotify has become now for music discovery. You know, you make some playlists of stuff that you really like. I mean, he's compiling stuff for a mix, a mix uh, CD at the moment. And the things that Spotify is spitting back at him, are like things that he's never heard before, things from like 10, 15 years ago, things that he might have missed, obscure B-sides. Yeah. So there's that now as the modern filter as well. Sorry, dude. Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, actually, Spotify has uh, helped out a lot in terms of like making it easier for you and actually give you a little bit of different taste on on maybe some some of the playlists that you might uh, create and it gives you some sort of um, um, uh, other options that might be similar to what you like it's cool but I, I feel like it's just like anything I, I remember back in the day like going to a record store you search through music that's what makes you different as a DJ as well and like now that we have like all this uh, let's say noise that is coming in uh, because it's just so much music that is being released. I understand. Like I go through like maybe a thousand songs and I find like ten or twenty that I like. You know. So, but that's your job as a, as a DJ. I feel like that makes it even more fun um, because you can create some really creative uh, playlist that is made out of shady music that you might call, and you only use like parts of the of, of the track, and that makes you different when you mix it properly. You just like whoa, like what is that? You know. But. Um, is is yeah I I think that uh, in terms of maybe Beatport or other like platforms that are releasing music maybe uh, it could be arranged properly uh, because like some of these uh, genres like it's techno and then it's just does not sound like what I call techno you know so so it's it's like obviously it's it's like maybe generalized like, no, yeah maybe it doesn't listen, really matter exactly no listen yeah. listen guys it's like with 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 vibrate we had the same problem because there are some artists on on our charts with which which doesn't belong there but imagine how many filters you you have to make for every single genre and they are born every day it's impossible and yeah. it's uh, like yeah, it, who decides? You know, now it's this, now it's that, and um, I mean, it's always there's going to be always a complaint. What what style is called, and who it's, it's literally impossible to 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 to. I mean, we're doing our best to you know to point you the right way, but it's kind of hard. Still, I mean, maybe it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter yeah. Maybe it doesn't. Huh? It's all music. Hmm? Yeah. It's good or bad. Uh, the it's, only two uh, well we it's, it's funny because uh, Carl and I talk about we you know we talk about this on a phil philosophical level. Uh, quite a lot um, and he as we all know is one of the longest standing purveyors uh, curators of music in the scene and you know his comment is and I, I totally agree is we're in a completely new world now I was DJing in my hometown in Ireland recently and I pulled out my record which was on vinyl and I'm very proud of the fact that it's on vinyl even though I fucking spent a load of money and haven't sold a copy anyway <laughs> um, you know <laughs> like you were talking about. Anyway, but the thing is, my young cousin was there, 15 year old. And I pulled it out and I was p putting it on. She goes, What's that? <laughs> uh, I'm, that's my record. She said, what? What's a record? And I, and I said, I put it on. She said, And then I took, changed the side. She said, What are you doing? I said, I'm changing the side. She goes, Doesn't it just play forever? It's a whole new world. These kids don't, e they don't even know what records are. They listen to Spotify, they have continuous music. They've got more access now than we ever had. And that's really, really exciting. And I'm actually really excited to hear the kind of music that she's going to be making in, well, and actually soon. And, and, and one more thing about uh, records you told and, and, and shops. Imagine I was uh, born and uh, lived all my life in Ljubljana. And the only shop, I mean, the, 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 the nearest shop 
we had to drive 400 kilometers to get those records. So believe me, when when digital era came, you know, I was more than happy because, <laughs> like, I, I travel around the world, but the city where I've been the most times it's Munich, just because I went there every two or three weeks to buy records for years and years and years and years. Imagine that. So, oh, I'm so happy we are in digital era right now. So so happy. <laughs> Janka, anything to add? I just wanted to add about you know Spotify and the earlier issues you mentioned the filters, like when you get the entry barrier down, like the financial entry barrier now everybody can do music, but you know basic economy means that you have oversaturation of music, so you really need the filters. And about the Spotify thing uh, you guys mentioned earlier, that's one of the things I don't completely agree because that's based on algorithms. So yes, you get new stuff from your Spotify, but in the end it's AI deciding what you like based on the other stuff you like. So if it gets a bit more complex, then in the end, do you really need a DJ? If the AI can decide <laughs> what you like based on what you like before, and it gets it right every time, do you need a DJ? Well, that's an interesting point that we don't have time for today, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> you have one more? You have one more? As well, we have two more. We have two shock more. Let's, let's do one. Let's do one. Yeah. Well, like leave, like do one. Well, just, no, just one more thing. Uh, but when you said like curating uh, records for, for, for DJs, that's wrong. But curating uh, music for uh, a person who just listens to his music at home, like from time to time, that's okay. But curating for a DJ, that's his job. But uh, an average well, person goes to, the to Spotify. Uh, why? What if he's using the curation? Because I, I, I know a lot of very big DJs who are using Spotify in that way, and they're using it in addition to what yeah, because they're doing. I have to say, I do we agree use with you a little bit. I use it. With I Paul, it because, no, but I mean, like, if it gets you, it doesn't, doesn't mean even how do you get interesting music for your set. It doesn't matter. If it helps you, you know, it doesn't really, why do you have to go through 100 if you go to 500? Because you're lazy. No, no, I'm not, listen, I'm, I'm saying, like, you spend, <laughs> no, no, I'm saying, like, no, 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 listen, I'm saying, like, you spend, like, two hours going through music. Leave in those listen. two hours, you go if, in the normal way, like you mentioned, you go through a hundred tracks, let's say, like or something like that. Maybe in that way, you you've gone through like five hundred or a thousand, and if it gets you that quality music that you need for your set, then the each method you could have work. To go you know? to, also, you, as well, by the by the time you get to a thousand, are you really listening? Exactly. Like, so are you just you still yes, you should. Yeah. Yes, yes you should. No, because no, it's no, also personalized what you like, play. You know. Once again, you are lazy if you don't do, if you don't do it. You have to go through. It's every still two hours. Thing. It's two hours listening to music. No, it's, it's the same eight hours. Of, it's eighty, ten hours music of listening. Like man, sometimes I'm like, ask my fiance there. Example, like, example, uh, I'm dying there at the beat board. My head is exploding. I don't know what's my name anymore. But I, I still go through that. And and for me as a professional, that's that's uh, I cannot discuss about it. But let me tell you about AI. I'm sure that AI knows better what's good for this average listener than himself. I'm sure. With all the big data, the computer can predict better for an average listener. DJ is a different story. Okay. So. It's all good. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> Feeling uh, good about on. himself, huh? Right? <laughs> Chris, Chris looks like he's about to rip a man's head off over here. Like. <laughs> Dude, this is, yeah, we're it's gonna be a long yeah, it's night. coming from the it's crypto gonna be, guy right it's gonna yeah. be a long yeah. night i am all about new things because <laughs> you know smarter kids are coming because with music it's the same with everything kids are coming and and, and we are all dinosaurs yeah. dinosaurs and uh, i don't want to die in dark not knowing what new generation can come and i'm open to new things and i always am always be all right, so the final question, the final statement, which is in no way controversial whatsoever. <laughs> Get ready. Your marketing is more important than your music. Oh. Anyone want to start while True. I leave the room? <laughs> True. How dare you? <laughs> so it's, it's, it's funny because um, it's, you know, uh, <laughs> being here this week, um, I had had conversations with friends that, I've been producing for quite some time, and trust me, their music is, is great, it's, it's good, it's a little bit above average, I will say, but, um, and they have like record labels and all that. It's just that they suck at promoting themselves or promoting their labels, and so it's like, how can people listen to your music? How can people find out about you when you're not putting yourself out there, you know? So it is, it's not like the, the music is, is, is bad. It's, your music is good. You got one thing right, you know, which is your music, 
Now, how can you get the music out there? Because now it's not like you're you're printing records and there's only like 10 record stores in your in, in, in your city that you can go to and, and grab the music from. Now you have like all this um, technology and, and like many different platforms that you get access to. And this is like now you have like thousands of millions of people that you can get get um uh can, can, can get access to your music but how can you get it out there when there's like thousands of you making music too right so, so you pay the pr people who are making the money in the industry oh say that out loud yeah you want the mic uh, in front of you then chris <laughs> <laughs> no i mean uh, it, that, but that's uh, collaboration comes in there again there are people who are really really great at the marketing side and you can work with them but it's freaking hard. Everybody, you know, now you, you, well, you know, when I started, no doubt yourself, I was just into the music. I didn't want to run my own social media program, uh, freaking Instagram and all this stuff. It still drives me nuts. And so it is difficult. It is, now you have to be a producer, a DJ, a live act, a marketing guy, a label owner, a designer, a photographer, a fashionista. Well, that's okay because you just you just wear black. It's fine, you know. You know, like the a model. You have to look really good on this side or this side. You got to make sure that you're in the right spot, and you take and you have to have all the filters on your phone for the photos. It's actually really difficult. I mean, I don't want to fucking do that. Yeah, but that's why you don't get to listening to the music. Let's make an app where all the introverted DJs who doesn't post uh, 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 pictures uh, would do this. I, I mean, this app would do this for them artifi uh, artificially, you know, just make them <laughs> make us nice <laughs> and all the nice stories about us. And this is what, how we Tinder? can. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> sure. These days, yes. And uh, so this sounds like my love life, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so an app to make us uh, uh, introverted DJs nice and interesting would be a really cool solution, you know. So we can fight against all these nice ladies with uh, with uh, looks. Oh, he had to go there, didn't he? Yeah, he had to go there. And there's some nice you ladies mean, in the room as well. You mean, uh, <laughs> you mean hashtag techno? Yeah, I do that. Hashtag me too. I do hashtag techno, and then I look at hashtag techno, and there's all these. Busty girls shuffling. <laughs> That's not techno. Okay. I don't oh, know what techno this, is. This, this subject is not as controversial yet, so let me take it up a Let's notch. Go. Yes. Yeah. yeah, raise the tone for yeah, us. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Because, <laughs> like you said, you know, you can be the best DJ, but if nobody hears your music, you know, you can be the best producer, but if they don't get to your music, they could never know you. But then, now at least, the, the last year, you get a lot of the artists that their music is okay, but their marketing is so much on point, they're not driving the other music industries so or the other promoters or record label owners, they're driving the, their target group, the crowd, the kids, to listen, to look at them at Instagram, and the demand is rising. So in that case, like it might happen at the time, if you can promote yourself good enough to the normal, to the average customer, then you don't really need to make quality music because they are going to want you. And if there's demand, there's supply. Can I, can I know it's sad. That's why. Um, I have another solution. You're gonna laugh again. Uh, when when we were starting Vibrate, I, I my idea was to somehow calculate the art, which is now boo, you know, and everything. But imagine in beside all the the, the mixes on YouTube, you would have like a, a technical skill uh, scale where uh, you would do um, where would you calculate <laughs> if your mix is in key, if how many tracks. <laughs> are mixed together the 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 power of the music uh it does no but what if the track is amazing and no no sir track listen, listen to this let's go madonna is singing live and we know that she sucks at singing live and then beyonce is singing really good live and she gets the same attention and that's not fair it's all about the mathematic and i'm not arguing about uh, against the art it's just one little scale be beside the taste of the people that's interesting yeah, but then what about if there's an amazing track it's produced shit but the vibe is amazing. The performance is amazing. The recording is distorted as all fuck, but it sounds incredible. It's, it's amazing. I'm saying a small yeah. scale against just a small scale with the people. I'm saying like a small scale where technical stuff would be uh, um, um, if it is on point or not. If it is distorted or not, it doesn't matter. People will still love it. But people who are into the music would like listen a little bit more like on a technical side. If it's compressed right or not, this and that. Just a little scale. Nothing. Nothing. Wow. Yeah, but it's an entirely subjective thing. 
And that's the beauty of this lovely genre of ours. So, we are out of time, unfortunately. Us five are going to go outside and have a fight. Yeah, let's, <laughs> yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Thanks very much, guys. That was amazing. Brilliant. Thank you to Christopher and everybody else. Peace out. Get out! Get out the lot of you! <laughs> Last orders, get out! <laughs>